Hello there. Today I found a bottle I thought would be quite interesting to look at. This is a bottle of Baume de Venise, but this is Baume de Venise Rouge. This is from Domaine de Bernardin. It's the 2022. So I think even these days, most of us still really, when we hear the expression Baume de Venise, think about the sweet Muscat Baume de Venise, the Vendu Naturel, the fortified sweet wine of the Rhone Valley. And I think we're right to. I mean, this is what the village is most famous for. And in fact, there are records going back to the first century AD. Pliny the Elder evidently writes about Muscat growing in this location. But in fact, since 2005, there's been an appellation for Baume de Venise Red, which effectively is, is a village named Côte de Rhone. And to put it in perspective, for instance, the appellation of, of Baume de Venise neighbours Gigonda. I mean, it's on the other side of a, a, a low hill, but the two do border each other. Or, for instance, it's not particularly far to the appellation of Vacuera. If you head southeast of Baume de Venise, you, you end up in Ventoux, on Mont Ventoux. And slightly to the north, a little further away, you, you have the other named villages of the Côte de Rhone, Cairen and Rasto. And this is the area of the southern Rhone that produces premium Côte de Rhone, in other words. Now, Baume de Venise has its own distinctive terroir. The vineyards here are on the, the lower slopes of the Dontil de Montmirail, which is a, a limestone outcrop, evidently Dontil is, is lace if you translate that from French. This limestone outcrop, which actually modifies the climate. I mean, you have a warm Mediterranean climate, but the, the steep rising hill protects, shelters the vines here from, from the cooling winds and gives them a little extra ripeness. The slopes are southeast facing and they sit between about 100 and 600 meters above sea level. The soils are referred to as an Oxonian mull, and this is a, a form of mull that is unique to the southern Rhone, evidently. And the vineyards from which this wine come not only from Baume de Venise itself, but from the neighbouring villages of Lafar, Suzette and Roque Alaric. Domaine de Bernardin is a 25 hectare estate. The majority of their vines are planted to Muscat, with about 8 hectares being devoted to red wine production. The estate was originally owned by the Bernardin monks, but since the early 19th century has been owned by the Castode family, and they understand that they farmed this estate for five generations. Domaine de Bernardin is considered as one of the leading estates of the Appellation, and probably one of the leading influences in that was Louis Castode, who ran the estate in the 1940s, and he very much felt that Baume de Venise deserved more recognition, and he was a real driving force behind the establishment of the Muscat Baume de Venise Appellation in 1945. He worked hard to build the reputation of the estate and his daughter Renée is, is still actually involved in the day-to-day -day running of the estate, although in fact it's Louis's granddaughter Elizabeth, her husband Andrew and their son Romain who do most of the running of, of the estate today. Romain, I understand, is the winemaker. Their approach to viticulture is very hands-on. There's a lot of manual labour goes on here. I believe in debudding, de-leafing, bunch thinning. Their approach follows sustainable guidelines and they believe in ploughing and ploughing back in the great ma as compost. So that's the skins, the pedicels, everything that's left after the grapes have been crushed and pressed. They believe in biodiversity and it's noted that there are olive trees growing nearby, cypress trees, there's rosemary, capers are grown and so are almonds. It's a very typical Mediterranean scene, I guess. And although they haven't completely done away with chemicals, they do say that they will only use those when they absolutely have to. They'd much rather work harder so with the manual operations to, to look after the vines than spray, if, if possible. Now, to have the Baume de Venise Appellation, you have to have at least 50% of Grenache in your blend. There has to be 25% of Syrah, and there must not be more than 10% of white grape varieties going into the blend. So white grapes are allowed, but their use is limited. In fact, the blend on this is 60% Grenache. Um, they go up to the maximum of 25% of Syrah. There's then 6% of Marsan. 5% of Morvedra and 4% of Grenache Blanc. So there is the maximum 10% of white grapes going into this as well. Their aim is to avoid over-ripeness in, in the grapes. Everything's hand-picked. And at fermentation, they're looking to avoid over-extraction. 
Maceration will go on for 15 days. Fermentation takes place in concrete tanks. I believe their practice is for, is for using indigenous yeast, but they don't actually specify that with the reds. They talk about that with their other wines, so I'm not entirely sure about that. So yes, maceration goes on for 15 days in concrete tanks. And after that, the wine is aged in inert vessels. It sees no oak whatsoever. They really want to show the character of the fruit and not have that masked by anything else. Now, I don't know whether that aging goes on further in concrete tanks or whether that goes on in stainless steel tanks. It might be a mixture of both. And I also don't know how long the wine ages for prior to release. So let's have a look at the wine, shall we? My first impression is that it's actually quite a dark, purplish red colour. I, I can see through it, I can just see through it, it's certainly not opaque and there's quite a sort of an open purple colour, it's, it's, it's a red purple rather than a blue purple. The wine has 14% alcohol according to the label. It is clinging to the glass fairly readily and is forming some quite large tears, it's, it's relatively viscous there. So let's see what we make of the aroma, shall we? The aromas are powerful, they're ripe, they're quite heady. There's quite a dried fruit note to it. It's hints of raisins. Dried cranberries actually quite a nice way of looking at it. There is a sort of a slight leatheriness to it, which is quite typical of the red wines at Baume de Venise. But there's a rich, juicy red fruit there. It's very ripe red, red plum. It's very ripe red cherry. There's an incredibly ripe sort of raspberry note, maybe mulberries running through there. It's, it's ripe and juicy. There are sort of hints of meatiness, touches of smokiness behind that, but actually all beautifully harmoniously together. It's, it's a rounded, rich, ripe, quite intense set of aromas. So let's see what it tastes like. On the palate, there's all that juicy red fruit that I was talking about on the nose. And then you've got sort of a quite savoury dark fruit. There's a almost a black olive note, concentrated bitter licorice note, surrounded by sweet licorice, actually. I mean, the bitterness is not particularly astringent. There is quite nice freshness running through that mid palate there. It's almost a slightly meaty, milky touch as well. I talked about leatheriness on the nose. I think there's an element of that in there as well. So you've got this lovely, juicy, ripe fruit, but also these slightly more savoury notes. Almost a touch of sort of, I was talking about meatiness, there's a touch of bacon fat sort of in, in the roundness and the richness of the mid palate. The wine's pretty full bodied. There's plenty of fruit. It's not particularly finishing as overly hot. Certainly the alcohol's adding a little bit of roundness to the back palate. The alcohol isn't preventing the, the sort of juicy, very ripe red cherry sort of notes from from showing on the back palette there. There is a structure, but it's very smooth. The tannins aren't particularly astringent or grainy. There's a sort of a, a, a velvety smoothness to the finish. The finish lasts quite well. There's a little bit of spice. There's a little bit of meatiness there, but mostly the, the, the taste you're left with are this lovely opulent red fruit. Harking back to the nose, it's very ripe red plum, mulberry, ripe red cherry, perhaps high ripeness raspberry as well. Quite a juicy fruit finish. I guess if anything, maybe my comment would be that it's not particularly concentrated. This isn't necessarily a wine that you'd age for 10 years or more. It would probably last out to sort of seven, eight years quite happily, but why would you need to? It's got such lovely, ebullient, ripe, attractive, juicy fruit now that this is lovely to drink as it is. Now I looked at our average critic score and for this vintage, this wine scored an 89 which I think is pretty much spot on. I think this is a wine that delivers lovely drinking. It, it's nicely made, it's got good balance, it will age reasonably well. It's not a fine wine, it's not for long ageing, but it will provide some very enjoyable drinking. So thank you so much for joining us for the tasting. It's, it's really great to have you watch. If you've enjoyed watching, please press the like button. That would be very much appreciated. If you'd like to watch more of these videos, do please subscribe to our channel. It would be fantastic to have your support there.
If you have any comments you'd like to leave, please pop those in the comments box below. We're always delighted to hear your feedback. We'd love to know what you think about the wines we're looking at, the tastings we're doing, or anything else that relates to that. I will leave a link in the notes below for the page on the Wine Searcher website for this vintage of this wine, so that you can follow that up, you can see where it's available near you, what the price is, what the critics have to say, or any of the other details we have about the, the wine there. So thank you once again for joining us, and I do hope that you'll manage to make some time and come and join us for another tasting in the very near future, won't you? Bye for now.